Josh from Nyko. These are some tips on how to use the jack and drill. Tip number one, put this away. We don't want that. It's called a jack and drill, not a jack and impact gun. We want to use this. Okay, so reason number one, we're going to use the drill, not the impact gun. So for one, the impact gun, it's going to be loud, it's going to be slow, it, you're going to hate it. Uh, also, it's uh, the hammering action of the impact, right? Because that's this is moving back and forth, I don't know, 100 times a second. Uh, we don't want that. That's going to be really tough on our gears, it's going to wear things out, it's not going to be good. What we want is a good high power drill. It doesn't have to be like a big $600 mixing drill or anything like that. But we also don't want like a cheap black conductor. Um, this is a DeWalt 20 volt brushless XR model number DCD998. It works great. It is it does have a hammer setting. We're going to make sure that's turned off um, and we're just going to put it in drill mode. We're not going to set the clutch or anything like that. One thing this has that makes it really handy is the uh, the power detect. It's kind of like a, an e-clutch. So it shuts off off when it's using too much power. So uh, it won't burn out as easily because you'll know if you're, if you're drawing too much power, if your trailer's too heavy, you just can't handle it. It's going to cut out and then you know I gotta do some else. Which brings me to the next tip. What do I do if my trailer's too heavy for that, my drill, or my battery's dead, or I forgot my drill altogether? Jack and drill's on there. Um, I don't want to put the handle back on. Well, for one, the handle back on once the uh, jack and drill is back on. You don't need any tools because you could just use that exact same pin and use that to put the handle back on. However, what I like to do is I keep one of these. This is a, a breaker bar, a cheater bar, whatever you like to call them. 20, 30 bucks new, if that. Um, and they are super handy to have on you. So we got our square drive, and we got our square drive. I think you know how that's gonna go. And uh, yeah, that works excellent. And I actually prefer this to the handle that comes with it. It's, uh, it doesn't stick out as far, you get more leverage with the handle, it's great. Next tip is use these guys. Make sure that you're greasing your jack. You do that whether you're using the jacker drill or not, but uh, also keep in mind that you are spinning things a lot faster. Um, so you really want to make sure that you're keeping everything well maintained and greased um, so that you uh, get a long life out of your parts. So I want to talk a little bit about the design of the jack and drill a little bit, specifically this end of it. Um, so you may be wondering, well, why do we use the half inch square drive if I'm not supposed to use my impact gun on it? My impact gun has a half inch square drive. Well, the reason is we wanted to, to use, you know, anyone has or can buy cheap uh, a square drive adapter for their drill. Um, and it's not something proprietary that if you lose it, you need to buy a Nyko brand one. You can just, you know, you can get them anywhere in, no matter where you live. The other thing is, is it makes it more versatile because we can do things like this, like put our breaker bar on it or a torque wrench or anything like that. So when we're in situations where we don't have our drill on us um, got that and then we've got the the hex head on the end which fits a one inch socket you're probably not going to use a one inch socket because if you're using a one inch socket you're probably using your half inch drive anyway so why would you use it but uh it just gives you more options so say you're missing your drill you're missing this but you've got a big crescent wrench on you and you know Okay, this is the last one. This is the most important one as well. So one thing you want to keep in mind is when you're using your drill on the jack and drill, uh, it's a lot like using a bolt saw or a really big bit or anything like that. Um, there is that uh, potential for it to whip around. Uh, you want to have two hands on the drill at all times. And then make sure that when you're just about all the way down or all the way up, you know, once you get there, the jack's gonna stop moving. Um, and if you're holding the tr trigger down, the drill's not gonna know to stop. So if you come to a dead stop like that, it's gonna be like having a, a whole saw bind up on you. Um, so just, you know, it's not, it's a pretty easy problem to avoid. Um, you just wanna make sure that when you're getting to near the top or the bottom, just slow it right down and keep an eye on it. So I'm going all the way down, getting to the bottom here and just kind of throw it in, keep an eye on it, and now it's in. Easy as that. So it's just a matter of paying attention and uh, taking it slower at the end there. 